Hi, I'm Darren Ford, DaVinci Machining, here to talk about the Shooting Technologies ADM. If you're processing your own brass, or you're buying brass that's already cleaned and not deprimed, then this machine's for you. This is a fully automated decapping or depriming system. Let's see what comes with the ADM and how to get it set up. Now when you take your ADM out of the box, it's gonna have this silver front plate assembled on the unit. I have this off for this video only. Don't take this plate off, you don't need to. I'm just doing that so you can see where the decapping prime is, or the decapping pin is, and where and how the machine moves. So the machine is uh, compatible with a lot of different uh, calibers, small pistol, large pistol, uh, some rifle calibers, we have conversion kits that will change the rotating deck, the height of that, so that you can uh, do uh, rifle cartridges. Um, the machine will come with uh, bushings for small pistol. It will come with a feed tube for small pistol, and it will come with the transformer power supply and then the main machine itself. So to get set up, it's pretty simple. Uh, most of the machine is already done. Uh, the first thing that I generally do is, now I shoot PCC, so I have the 9mm or the small pistol brass uh, uh, bushings, and you'll drop one of those in each one of the holes of the rotating deck. Now, what you can do is you can just manually index this to make sure everything uh, uh, rotates freely, uh, but once all these are in, you can pretty much uh, leave them alone. If you need to change calibers, you will take those out and you will put the large pistol in, uh, depending on what caliber you are actually doing. So the stainless steel feed tube is next. Now this feed tube also needs to be replaced if you switch calibers. So for example, this one is for 45, um, 38, and 357. So it's a larger diameter. Um, the one that I'm gonna use today is for the small pistol or nine millimeter. So as you put it in, this assembly that is on the front of the unit is already assembled. You don't have to do anything. You'll need a Allen wrench to be able to tighten this, but we'll just drop that down through the sleeve and this will go all the way down to the rotating deck. Now, to adjust this, it's pretty simple. Um, what you want is that when you drop some brass in, and that's what I would normally do to set this, is take some, some uh, cases I would put them in, obviously, with the bottom of the case down, and the first case will drop into the rotating deck head. The second case will sit directly on top of that. Now, the way the machine works is, is that as the deck rotates, this one will strip out from underneath, that case will drop down into the next hole, and then the process will continue. So to adjust the height of this uh, stainless steel feed tube, I usually go up to the piece of brass that's sitting on the one that's in the rotating head. I'm gonna to go to the bottom of where the nine millimeter case starts to taper off towards the bottom. And I'm gonna go just above that point where it starts to taper. That gives me a little bit of a uh, headroom. So if I get like a 38 case or something like that, it'll rotate through uh, and it won't stick the machine. There's a tension sensor that is on the actual rotating deck head. So if, it, if for whatever reason a piece of brass catches or something and it sees too much tension, the rotation will stop, the machine will show an alignment error on the top. You will need to either loosen the tube and clear that, uh, or you're gonna have to you know, figure out what, what is actually causing it to not rotate. There's something that's in the way of the rotation. So once we have this height, we're gonna lock it down with the Allen key on the front, and then you're pretty much done with that. So this machine has three speeds. It has speed one, speed two, and speed three, which are different uh, rotation rates. So the speed one is 44 cases per minute, speed two is 48 cases per minute, and speed three is 52 cases per minute. So when this machine can basically run almost, uh, you know, one case, you know, per second, uh, you're going to need to feed it. And that's probably the next big project you're going to have is how do I feed this the brass? 
Now, in my case, I reload with the 750 with the Dillon case feeder. Um, you can use anybody's case feeder uh, to, to get the uh, brass to the machine. Um, hand feeding this is probably going to uh, get old pretty quick, so most of us use case feeders. Now, in my case, I built a platform to raise the ADM up to the level of the bottom of the tube of the Dillon. So all I do is if I'm loading, obviously my Dillon case feeder is lined up with my 750. Um, when I want to decap, all I do is rotate the top and that feed tube now lines up with this tube here, this silver one, and it's a straight shot down into the machine. Some of the other options are, is you could run a rubber hose from the case feeder down to our stainless steel one here. Um, there's a ton of options as far as that goes. You're gonna have to figure out how to get it the brass. Again, the Dillon case feeder at, on high speed runs about the same speed as this. So um, I don't generally outrun the, I don't run out of brass if I'm using the Dillon case feeder on high speed. Once you get brass into it and it starts to decap, the brass is then going to come out. So that's your next project is to get the um, brass into uh, either a bucket or a box or whatever it is you want to uh, have your finished brass in. So on the front of the machine, underneath the deck, there is a large outlet. You can stick a rubber hose on that. You can run the hose into like a five gallon bucket on the floor. Um, I, in my case, I just use a, a little like uh, um, container uh, that I put under the front and I watch it pretty closely, so, so I empty it often. On the back of the machine, there's a small outlet and that small outlet is for the spent primer. So when it deprimes and it, the pin pushes it through, it pops out the backside through a tiny hole in the back. You could put a tube on that and run it you know, off the back of your, your reloading bench and uh, have that go into a trash can or a bag or whatever you want. Um, but you are gonna have to feed it brass. You're gonna have to have the actual brass that has been processed go somewheres and the spent primer go somewheres. Once all three of those are done and you're up and running, now again, you can manually index, other than the spent primer coming out, you can manually index this to make sure your machine is flowing good before you plug it in. Now, to plug it in, it's super simple. The, uh, in the box, there's a transformer and there is a multi-pin connector on the transformer. There's a multi-pin connector on the back of the machine. These can only go together one way. So you can't screw that up. It, you can't plug it in backwards or anything. You'll plug a power cable in. This one's here. This transformer is set for 115. So all I do is just plug a, 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 the power cable in, plug it into the wall and then you can turn the power switch on the front of the transformer on. On the very top, you will see the top piece light up, and then basically it's, it's a pretty simple process from there. Again, your Dillon case feeder or whatever you're using has come in and it's feeding the brass. When you hit start, you will go into speed number one. If you hit start again, you go to speed two. Hit start again, you will go to speed three. So there on the top of the uh, electronics unit, there is start, stop, one and two. So start toggles through speed one, two and three. Stop obviously stops the machine. So if you have a jam, if you see a piece of brass you don't want to go through, you can hit the stop on the top. One and two are to move the head either up or down manually. So one and two are only used in manual mode and that will in turn move it either up or down depending on whether you hit one or two. Other than that, this thing is pretty simple. So you're going to feed it brass, you're going to put it into whatever speed you want, and then you're going to watch the unit. Uh, I'm a big fan. I don't just set it and forget it and, and go do other things. I actually tend to watch this um, because what I've experienced with this is, is that you know, we're either using range brass, we're not using, you know, uh, premium, you know, first, you know, maybe we're using once fired, but it's not brand new brass. So what I'm looking for is I'm watching to make sure I don't get a 32 case, a 38 case, I'm trying to pick those out as I go. Um, and what I'm also doing is if the machine has an issue, I can deal with that issue um, accordingly. 
Now, the two issues that are gonna happen is you will get a piece of brass that doesn't rotate or sticks. The other issue you would have is with the actual decapping pin. So, if, for example, you don't sort your brass good or something like that, what happens is, is you could have like, just for example, a 22 case in a nine millimeter case, and in that case, as it rotates through, the decapping pin will punch through the 22 and the nine millimeter. It will deprime it, but that 22 case can stick on the depriming pin. So I do recommend try and sort your brass the best you can, uh, get out the stuff that's gonna cause problems. But if it did stop there, at that point, you could use the one or two to move the head up or down. Uh, and in that case, you know, you, know it, it, you can just clear the jam. Uh, we do get military brass, or you may have the primer pockets that are, there's some brass that has super small primer pockets, and it tries to punch. If it pushes down and it doesn't complete the cycle, the machine again has a sensor and it will stop. So if it does that, you would just hit start and it will bring the deck up. You hit start, it will rotate. So that one piece of brass that it couldn't punch through, it will be the next in line. So you're gonna to wanna to try and get that out so it doesn't mix in with your deprimed brass. Um, I have actually um, uh, you know, done you know, tens of thousands of cases. I haven't actually broke a um, decapping pin yet, um, but if you do, we do sell replacement decapping pins and we actually sell the entire decapping uh, uh, rod, if you will, um, not just the end of the decapping pin. Um, you may hit a piece of brass or you may hit a rock inside a piece of brass and it snaps that pin. So those are things that can happen. Um, super easy to replace those um, if you need to. Um, on our website, there's a whole page that has uh, everything from the caliber bushings to extra pins to extra rods, uh, any of the accessory stuff you may need. Again, if you're doing rifle cases, you will actually change out the rotating deck for a taller deck so that the uh, brass stays in the deck better. Um, all of that can be found on the DaVinci website. Um, if you have any questions or um, you need help trying to figure out how to get things assembled, you can contact us through the DaVinci website. Thanks for watching.